Hey everybody, welcome back to Let's Play Katawa Shoujo Emmy's Path Part 3. And today we should be making it into Act 2, where it'll officially take us on Emmy's Path. Let's go. The students roll into class for the Saturday morning session, each and every one of them sporting the tired eyes of people who have worked through the night. With only a day left to prepare, I suppose it's not so surprising. Thankfully, we only have to suffer through classes until the lunch break, and then our time is our own. Muto lurches into class in a tired stagger. I suppose students aren't the only people here that enjoy their late Friday nights. Without saying a word, he scrawls some pages and some page and question numbers on the board and slumps down on his desk. It's completely a typical behavior for him, but it appears that no one in the class is going to call him out on it. Wordlessly, the students shuffle their textbooks into position and get to work. Not wanting to break the trend, I do the same. Fatigue has made the class antisocial. Not a peep is heard among the ruffling papers. That could partly be attributed to the two empty seats beside me. For some reason, Misha and Shizune aren't present, probably doing council work for the festival. It's very quiet without Misha present. I wonder if she was born as rowdy as she is, or if she is making up for Shizune's lack of voice. Nakai, can I speak to you for a moment? I am so engrossed in thinking about Misha that I don't even notice Muto approaching my desk. Sure, what's this about? It's probably better if we speak outside the classroom. Oh, it's this part again. Yeah, we can skip this a little bit. We don't need to read this part again. Yeah, okay, actually, I can't skip because I didn't advance further. Yeah, we've already read this feel. We don't need to do this again. Just going to blow through this part, save some time. Trying to get to the new stuff. Alrighty, let's see. Okay, da 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 Hey, Hanako. Bye, Hanako. <laughs> yeah, I'm just going to get through all this part again. Just going to get to the new part. Okay, I think this is where it differentiates. I sought their past classrooms filled with students frantically doing this and that, buzzing around like little worker bees. You wouldn't guess the school day is over. It's a bit quieter outside, but not by much. People zip by left and right, hurrying as quickly as they can, busy and energetic. I feel the opposite. The midday sun seems to be draining all the spirit out of my body, making it feel limp all over. Warm, soft air flows inside my shirt, feeling like a cushion. I yawn lazily, thinking about what I'd do. I'll drop off my books at the dorms first, and then something I haven't decided yet. Maybe Kenji is in his room. No! Why are you going to do that? <laughs> on the way to dorms, I spot Emmy coming my way, running despite not having those weird running prosthetics on. I wave at her and she skids to a stop. Yo, Hisao! Spatters of white and green paint adorn her nose and chin respectively, but her smile is wide, as it seems it always is. She leans closer to me, amplifying the feeling she is examining me. What you doing? Nothing, really. I don't have anything to do for the festival, and everyone else seems to be doing something important. That's perfect! Then you can help me and Rin! With the festival preparations? Eh, I'm not sure if I would be of much help. That's fine, I'm not much help either. Emmy grabs my wrist and starts dragging me back inside the school quite forcefully. Even her walking speed is more like jogging, making me stumble over myself simply trying to keep up. The stairs slow Emmy down a little bit. Maybe it's hard to climb with her legs, or maybe she's finally run out of breath. We go all the way back to the third floor into the seniors' hallway, ending up where I left five minutes ago. I could just as well have stayed here waiting for Emmy had I known. So, are you... is Rin working on that mural still? That's right! She needs all kinds of paints and brushes and stuff, so I went to get them from the art classroom. And you need me to help with that? Well, Rin told me you had already helped her, so I thought you wouldn't mind. I see. So, thanks to Emmy's flaky logic, here I am again, collecting stuff from the art classroom for other people. The room is empty apart from ourselves and the lonely specks of dust floating in the air. Emmy skips straight away to the back wall, digging out a tiny crumpled piece of paper from her pocket. While she tries to make sense of, her, of the scrawled handwriting, I take a closer look at the materials lying around here. Dozens of paint cans and bottles are arranged on the shelves in a most unorganized fashion. Some look like they have been left there for several decades, relics of previous art club generations. 
Next to the heavy stacks of neatly piled drawing paper are boxes full of different sized brushes and unsorry crayons. The smells of paint, turpentine, and fresh paper float in the stale air, mixing in my nostrils to form that unmistakable scent of art. Emmy studies her notes, comparing them to markings on the various paint cans, and passes them to me as she finds the correct matches. She stretches her neck to look on the topmost shelf, but it's not quite enough. Her eye level stays below the shelf no matter what she does. Emmy gives up and just looks up to the shelf longingly like a child in a toy store, huffing in annoyance. After a moment of building anger, she starts jumping up and down, apparently trying to speed read the labels during the fraction of a second she can see them, and catch what she can. It's no surprise that she fails miserably and almost manages to bring the entire shelf crashing down. Now I see why me lending a hand here would be useful. Come on, let me do that. You can't jump high enough, and I don't want you to hurt yourself trying. Also, I'm like twice your height. You are not... She turns around, flaring scorn, flushed cheeks and all. Just kidding, just kidding. Anyway, I'll look up there, okay? She glares at me one more time, but can't come up with a retort. With a grudging hoof, <laughs> turns her back to me. So I begin scrounging around the top shelf for paint while below, Emmy crouches to scav scavenge what she can from the cu cupboards. I shake my head a little after double-checking to ensure she can't see me do so. Emmy having a complex about her height was a surprise. I wouldn't have joked about it otherwise. She seems easy going, but I guess everyone has their weak spots. Only after we have all only after we have almost all the items collected and spread out on a desk like a treasure hunter spoils, do I realize that it wasn't necessary the height jab that got her riled up. She might not like to be told that she can't do something, like jump. But Emmy herself seems to have forgotten all about it already. Quick to anger, quick to forgive. Is she that type of person? At least she doesn't seem to have taken anything to heart, as she chatters away happily while we pick up the rest of the items and then make our way back to Ren. I chivalrously carry the bulk of the materials as we make our way towards the dormitories. Ren is really stressed about getting her painting done. It's her own fault though, she should have started earlier. Is she going to make it? No idea. It looks good to me, but with Rin, you never know what's going on. I found her this morning lying in front of the dorm in fetal position. She hadn't slept all night. I can't believe that the night nurses hadn't found her. And now she's painting again like crazy. Yeah, I've noticed she that she comes off as kind of unhinged, so to speak. Emmy giggles at that, as well as at my likely too obvious awkwardness. I don't mind it. She's just a little weird sometimes. On that, I can agree with her. Unlike me, Emmy seems to be cool with Rin's whatever it is that feels so off about her. Still, they don't feel close like Misha and Shizune do, with them working as a single entity sometimes. It's hard to say where one ends and the other begins. Even though they're so different, just like Emmy and Rin are. And Rin is the most different of them all. Different from anyone else I've met. Yeah, I guess she's a very unique person. I return to that word again as if it encompasses Rin's personality by itself, but really it's just a substitute for a lengthy description of her oddities. Emmy giggles as I grasp about for a properly descriptive word. She's just weird. You know, earlier she just spent half an hour sitting on her box and stared at her toes. She giggles again in a way that makes me think she doesn't know what's funny about it, it just is. All that time! The working area is a mess, but the mural itself has taken over even more of the wall since I last saw it. The disfigured human figures have been mostly colored in tones of red, pink, and orange. Weird, imaginary things populating the spaces in between. It looks nice. I can't think of any word that would describe the work co concisely and comp comprehensively, so I settle myself on a nondescript nice. But honestly, it seems that the area around the wall becomes untidier at the same rate as the mural progresses. The ground is littered with dozens of paint cans, various art supplies, and empty soda bottles. Rin herself is in the center of this chaos, standing there looking very cozy as if she was a natural part of the scene. Her pant legs have been rolled up to her knees, exposing her thin legs, which sport a drying spectrum of war paintings, similar to those on Emmy's face. 
Emmy sprints the ring ahead of me and gleefully jumps in front of her. I'm back! That was fast. Did you run in the corridors again? Fisal, help me! Emmy points victoriously at me. Rin turns around following Emmy's finger with her eyes, looking at my general direction. She nods absentmindedly at me. She looks like she hasn't slept since last night. A vacant glazed stare that's focused slightly off me, and movements like in a slow motion movie. Hello, Hisao. Thank you for your help. Thank you for the help. Don't mention it. I just did. Never mind. Looks like you've made progress. Looking good, as far as I can tell. But now you get more bad luck. I know, but I'm willing to take the risk. That's a very nice thing to say. For me, of course. Not for you. This is why artists are always unlucky. They have to constantly look at their unfinished paintings. So artists can't find romance. Their favorite TV shows are canceled. Or they die young because of an unspecified disease. It's a deep and mysterious law of the universe. Unless they are blind. She considers this for a while, looking like she's going to fall asleep. There is a boy. At the art club, you see. Blind boy, so he doesn't. See. You already told me. I glance sideways at Emmy and she glances back in a way that tells she has heard this one before too. Neither of us says anything to Ren, though, so she continues her monotone solo soliloquy like an unfunny stand-up comedian. He should become an artist. No bad luck guaranteed. Don't you think that would be a good idea? That only blind people should become artists? No, not as such. You might have a point. Abandoning this train of thought, she turns again to consider her work and starts humming a tune that I think I recognize, but can't remember the name of. Emmy arranges the supplies we bought and moves a few paint cans around, and trying to bring some organization to the scene. Emmy, I need the Prussian blue paint. Which one's Prussian blue? She is staring helplessly at seven or eight cans, each with a different tone of blue. It's the one with Prussian blue paint in it. Jeez, Rin, you're not helping at all. I look around as well, even though I don't know what Prussian blue looks like either. I wonder what blue has to do with Prussia. Or what Prussia even is. The name sounds vaguely familiar, but I can't place it. While none of the blues look more Prussian than the others, the small print on the labels is leg legible enough to determine that none say any... Well, let me read that again. Blech. While none of the blues look more Prussian than the others, the small print on the labels is legible enough to determine that none say anything about the contents being Prussian. Blah. <laughs> there is no Prussian blue here. We need to go get more, then. I open my mouth to say that actually we're both not needed for such a simple task like finding another pot of Prussian blue, but Emmy's already grabbed my arm and started dragging me off. I wave the Rin who doesn't seem to have noticed that the two of us are even leaving. Well, she'll notice when she goes for her Prussian blue and finds out it's still not there. <laughs> Maybe. Probably not, actually. While I'm busy thinking of how weird Rin is, Emmy's been dragging me back to the art classroom. I feel myself starting to run out of breath. What's the rush? Huh? Emmy's giving me an appraising look, as if she's trying to figure something out. It's just that you seem to be in a hurry. I'm not sure I can keep up. Comprehension dawns on her face. You're not out of breath, are you? There's almost an accusing playfulness to her tone. I'm tempted to deny it, but then I realize that I've been breathing heavy since we stopped. Guess it's kind of obvious. A little. Not everybody can be in shape, you know. Takes all kinds, right? Emmy frowns. It's not a particularly good frown. Er, that is... I should get in shape? Not that I hadn't already decided to try for that. After that flutter on the track, I figured there's a real need to get in some sort of running habit. I was, after all, feeling pretty good until I had my false alarm. Well, actually, I wasn't, but it was... fun? 
Meanwhile, my comment seems to have helped Emmy come to some sort of real of decision. Well, that's it then. She gives me a serious look. You're joining me. I beg your pardon? In the mornings. You and I are now running partners. I've got a routine all planned out. In fact, she produces a crumpled sheet of paper. I've got it right here with me. I take the sheet of paper and give it a once over. Times, dates, and laps all laid out. A slow increase from just a few laps a day to... My God! Does she expect to have me running marathons? And where did she find the time to get this all together? And how long has she been planning this anyway? You've been planning this? A little. But it's really the nurse's idea. He told me to keep an eye on you to make sure you exercise like he told you to. A vast conspiracy? Maybe Kenji's onto something here. Oh, please, don't bring him up. This seems a bit much for just keeping an eye on me. Well, to be honest, I've been trying to find a running partner in the mornings for a while now. My god, Kenji! If you can only see the scheme unfolding! <laughs> oh, dear god. What do you need a partner for, anyway? It's easier to keep up a workout if you're not the only one doing it. Isn't that obvious? You're less likely to quit if someone else is counting on you to be there, right? I see. And this won't only keep you running, but it'll make sure that I keep running as well. Meaning that I'll be obeying the nurse. And I'll be keeping an eye on you just like he asked. You caught on quick, Hisao. And if I refuse? I have no intention of refusing, of course. But I've got to at least put up a token resistance to such a mas masterfully executed plan. Well, if you refused, I'd have to pout. And you'd have to live with being the guy who made Emmy of Arasaki pout. You don't want that on your conscience, do you? As if to demonstrate, Emmy begins pouting. <laughs> It is the most adorable, heart-wrenching thing I've ever seen. Okay, I'll do it! Just... Don't do that! I feel like I just hit a puppy. So it's settled, right? You're going to be my running partner? Follow the workout? And the dietary plan? Dietary plan? Yeah, the dietary plan! You've gotta eat healthy if you're going to get in shape, you know! I examined the workout routine closely. I don't see a dietary plan on here. All oh, right, I forgot to give that to you. Another crumple sheet of paper is produced and handed over. It's somewhat less detailed. I had the nurse help me come up with it. The amount of dedication that the nurse has to keeping me in good health is pretty overwhelming. I don't know many school nurses who would get one of their students to spy on me, much less help come up with a dietary plan. Then again, I guess I'm not in a normal school. And maybe that's not such a bad thing. Then again, this dietary plan seems to cut out just about everything that I'll be offered at the first festival tomorrow. Hmm. So, when does our running start? After the festival. Right after? What if I've had something to eat there? I could get a stomach ache, you know. I met the day after the festival. I knew that. Wasn't there something we were supposed to be doing? Oh, I guess we should get that paint for Rin, huh? Oh no, it slipped my mind! By the time we get the paint and get back to the mural, Rin's already wandered off. Oh well. Emmy and I both decide to part ways there, leaving the paint on the ground. Rin will find it, whenever she comes back anyway. Festival's tomorrow. I'm actually a little excited for it. At the same time, the weeks left me feeling pretty tired, so I read a little and then go to bed. And take another sip of my drink here. Done over an hour of chaos so far. Eep! Yeah, I'm trying to get a week's worth of it done right now. Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, of course. The next day, I wake up feeling a little lightheaded. It's almost noon already. Sleeping late is fine, since it's a Sunday and there are no classes. Not just a Sunday, though, but the festival as well. 
From my window, I can already see some people at the soba booth slinging noodles onto plates for people with a craving for low-quality food. I throw back a handful of my morning meds and ponder how to spend the day. There will be a few exams in the coming week, but I don't consider those as ominous as others, so I'm not as worried about them as I probably should be. With no urgent obligations regarding education, I should be free to spend the day at the festival as I like. Finishing my morning routine, I exit into the hallway, intending to go out and find something to eat. Passing by his door, I decide to see what Kenji's up to today out of impulse. I'm curious if he has any plans since everyone is doing something. Then again, I can picture him having built a soundproof shelter in his room. Or possibly something like a fort complete with a no girls allowed sign. And with the girls crossed out and the bodies crudely scrolled underneath it. Knocking on his door, which is luckily devoid of any kind of sign, I hear again the unsettling clicking of at least ten locks being pulled back. The door opens up a crack. Yeah, we're going to skip past the Kenji scene. We've already read this. I think it's pretty much the same. I mean, going into Act 2 and onward, it's going to be different, though. Act 1 is always the same, at least from what I can tell. Yeah, skip the Kenji scene. You can watch it on Hanako's path. It's pretty much the same there. Okay. Should I bother going? I've got a book I've been meaning to read. Something about an underground postal system that may or may not exist. It's short, too. I could have finished it in a day. But that would be a good w But would that be a good way to spend my time? Well, yeah, it definitely would be. But I suppose that it would probably be a better idea to head outside. See the festival. Try to integrate with all the other sideshow acts. Honestly, I should at least make an attempt to keep up the somewhat friendly personality I've had the past week. Maybe get something to eat. My stomach suggests. It's almost lunchtime. I can at least grab something from one of the stalls outside. Alright, and it should differentiate from here on out. Should be no old material. I'm soon outside, surrounded by various students and people who may or may not be their parents. Every so often I catch a glimpse of someone who clearly just came up from town for the promise of a festival. They're easy to spot. The ones who can't stop staring at behind their eyes, you can tell they're thinking, Now what's wrong with this one? I almost want to yell at them. But at the same time, can I deny that I've been doing the same thing all week? A wave of something like disgust sweeps over me, guilt for my own narrow-mindedness. I push the thoughts aside, concentrating on the pangs of hunger that burn my guts like a wildfire. The scent of something fried leads me to the promised land, where I can get some lunch. I'm just getting my order when a loud voice interrupts me. Hey! What the hell are you doing? Having break or lunch? Breakfast? You mean you just got up? Er... Suddenly sleeping all morning feels like a crime. No, I meant lunch. Honest. She's not buying it. Brunch? That's not a healthy breakfast at all. She snatches my food out of my head and glares at me. <laughs> what the hell is this girl doing? Hey, that's my breakfast. What happened to it being your lunch? That's my... Whatever. It's my food. Remy places her hands on her hips and begins lecturing me. Did you really forget your dietary plan already? You need to be more conscious of your health, he Sal. What about your heart? My heart's fine the way it is. Mostly. All I get in response is a roll of the eyes. I doubt that. You wouldn't be here if that was the case, would you? The girl's got a point, of course. But I'm not about to concede it. It's not that bad of a heart. Certainly it can handle a little grease now and again. Yeah, sure, and it handled a little running just fine, too. Emmy seems unconvinced. Not surprising, as I haven't even managed to convince myself. Maybe, but not if you're sleeping the day away all the time. A devious look suddenly crosses her face. Of course, if you'd been following a routine from the beginning, you wouldn't be in this situation. Hey, I've had a pretty eventful week, you know. For example, I almost died, and there was a lot of meeting people, and then I was on the roof for a while. Which is no excuse for slacking off, you know. A little near-death experience is no excuse for skipping basic exercise. Like running in the mornings! She nods, as if something important has just been decided. So it's settled then. 
You've seen the error of your ways and are willing to adhere to my routine, right? I'll see you bright and early in the morning. We'll be running, buddies. You know, you already, you'd already convinced me yesterday that this was a good idea. You don't need to convince me again. Not that I did a good job of being convinced. She's right about eating healthy, after all. And here I am ordering up something grossly unhealthy. But delicious! There are more important things than deliciousness, aren't there? Like staying alive? If Emmy weren't here growl beating me for my poor decisions, I'd probably... Hey, wait a second. A sudden question springs to mind. Hey, why the hell have you taken such an interest in my well-being? Emmy shrugs and grins at me. You're the new guy. I figure you don't have any friends yet, right? Besides, I've caused you trouble all week, right? I owe you for not getting angry. And I told the nurse I would anyway. Uh-huh. Crazy little running girl wants to make me healthy. Well, I suppose there are worse fates. <laughs> okay, that sounds fine. Thanks for your concern. Tomorrow morning, then? I figure that ends the conversation, so I turn to leave. Not so fast! I feel a hand on my collar, and in a second, I've been yanked backwards. Hey, no need to be so rough. What do you want now? Emmy looks almost wounded by my annoyed question. Thought you could use the company. Her eyes narrow. Besides, you were just going to try sneaking some more of that fried crap, weren't you? Well, I wasn't going to, but now that she mentions it, that would have been a really good idea. I was not! Another glare. Okay, maybe I was going to get a little. The glare continues. Okay, a lot! Jesus, I'm a danger to myself and others, aren't I? I get done agreeing that I need to be healthier, and then immediately start considering the next unhealthy habit that comes my way. I knew it! You can't be trusted! Now I definitely have to stick with you. This whole situation feels silly. I can only imagine what passerbys think of the sight of me being lectured by a tidy girl half my size. Maybe I should just give up for now. Fine, do what you like. <sighs> Might as well make the best of this. What do you want to do? Emmy thinks for a minute. Well, I promised Rin I'd stop by her mural. So let's do that. I confess I'm slightly curious as to how her mural turned out myself. So again, I consider there are worse fates. I give a nod of assent and find myself almost dragged bodily through the crowd as Emmy races to our destination. By the time we reach the dorms, I can feel my heart pounding. My heart shouldn't be pounding after just that. I take a few deep breaths, willing myself to calm down. I'm one of the most normal looking people in the school, but I still have to be here. Sometimes I almost wish I'd lost a hand or something. At least then it'd be obvious that I belong. But instead, I don't even look sick. Even now, trying to catch my breath, I just look out of shape. Emmy looks back and notices my state of distress. You're not going to die on me, are you? Please don't. It'll be all my fault, and I don't want to deal with that kind of guilt. Besides, after the last time, I really don't think I need to see that again. Especially because the nurse will totally say it's all my fault. N nah, I'm fine. Guess I need to start running after all. And he wanted to keep eating your greasy whatever it was. See, it's a good thing I found you, right? Yes, it was. Maybe. Of course, I don't add that I wouldn't be in this state if she hadn't dragged me across the festival grounds. Further conversation is interrupted by the sudden appearance of Ren. Oh, it's you. Hello, Emmy. Hey, Rin. I brought Heastel along because he, because he was going to give himself a heart attack. I was not. My objection goes unnoticed. We stopped by to see how the mural turned out. Rin nods slowly. Well, it's right there. You can see it pretty clearly. I find myself wondering how long Rin's been standing here in front of the mural. Alrighty, folks, gonna cut it off. We're going into 30 minutes, so stay tuned for Let's Play. Katawa Shoujo, Emmy's Path Part 4. When we'll continue on with Rin and Emmy here, and we'll see what else happens. 
Anyway, see you then, peoples.